The classroom buzzed with chatter as Ms. Carter wrapped up the lesson. It was one of those relaxed moments when students felt free to talk about anything. Weekend plans, favorite video games, or, as today's discussion had turned to, what their parents did for a living. My mom's a doctor, said Lily proudly. My dad owns a car dealership, added Noah, leaning back in his chair. My mom works at the grocery store, said Mia and a few others chimed in, listing off jobs ranging from lawyers to construction workers. Then Jake, who had been quiet until now, hesitated before saying, My dad works at NASA. For a second there was silence, then laughter erupted. Yeah, right, Ethan scoffed, rolling his eyes. And my dad is an astronaut. More giggles spread across the room. A couple of kids even started making space sound effects. Whoosh! Pew pew! Someone hummed the Star Wars theme. Jake's face turned red. No, really, he mumbled. He works on... Ethan cut him off. Does he hang out with aliens, too? He leaned over to Noah, whispering loudly enough for everyone to hear. Bet he thinks his dad's building UFOs. The whole class laughed harder. Even Ms. Carter sighed, stepping in to calm them down. All right, that's enough, everyone. But the damage was done. Jake sank in his seat, gripping his pencil tightly, his ears burning. Even Noah, his best friend, gave him a skeptical look. No one believed him. That evening, Jake sat at the dinner table, pushing his mashed potatoes around with his fork. His dad, Dr. Ryan Carter, glanced at him from across the table, noticing his slump shoulders and the way he barely touched his food. "'What's up, kiddo?' his dad asked, setting his glass of water down. Jake hesitated, then sighed. It's just... Today at school, we were talking about what our parents do for work. Dr. Carter nodded. Oh, yeah? What did you say? Jake looked down at his plate. I told them you work at NASA. His dad smiled. Well, that's true. Yeah, but they didn't believe me. Jake's voice grew smaller. They laughed. They acted like it was some kind of joke. Even Noah didn't back me up. Dr. Carter frowned slightly, then leaned back in his chair, thinking for a moment. Hmm, he said, rubbing his chin. So they don't think I really work at NASA? Jake shook his head. They think I made it up. Ethan said you probably build UFOs or talk to aliens. Dr. Carter chuckled. Aliens, huh? Man, I wish my job was that exciting. Jake let out a small, weak smile, but it faded quickly. I just... I don't know. I felt so embarrassed. His dad leaned forward, resting his elbows on the table. Tell you what, how about I come to your class tomorrow? Maybe they could... The next day, the classroom hummed with its usual pre-lesson energy, students chatting, trading snacks, and finishing up last-minute homework. Jake sat at his desk nervously bouncing his knee. He had told Ms. Carter that his dad wanted to visit, and she had agreed without hesitation. But now that the moment was almost here, he wasn't sure what to expect. Ethan, still riding the joke from yesterday, leaned over from his seat. So when's your dad beaming down from Mars? He teased, smirking. A couple of kids chuckled. Jake clenched his fists under the desk, but said nothing. Just then, a sharp knock on the classroom door silenced the room. Miss Carter looked up from her desk and straightened her posture. Come in! The door swung open. A tall man stepped inside, dressed in a dark blue NASA flight suit, patches sewn onto the arms and chest. A NASA ID badge clipped to his belt gleamed under the classroom lights. His confident stride and the way he scanned the room with a calm, assessing gaze made him instantly command attention. The class fell completely silent. Even Ethan's usual smirk faltered. Miss Carter smiled warmly. Class, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Ryan Carter, a lead engineer at NASA, and Jake's father. Jake felt a swell of pride in his chest as he watched his dad glance around the room his expression friendly, but the classroom was dead silent as the astronaut on Dr. Carter's phone floated effortlessly in microgravity, waving at the stunned students. Hey there, Earthlings, the astronaut said with a grin. Dr. Carter tells me some of you had questions. 
About NASA. Miss Carter's mouth was slightly open in amazement. The students sat frozen, their eyes locked onto the screen. Even Ethan, who had spent the last day cracking jokes, looked like he'd just seen a ghost. Jake couldn't help but glance around the room, savoring the moment. Dr. Carter chuckled and ended the call, slipping his phone back into his pocket. Now let's talk about what I actually do, he said, placing a small black case on the desk. He unlatched it and carefully pulled out a charred, metallic-looking slab, no bigger than a notebook. This, he said, holding it up, is a real piece of a heat shield from a spacecraft that re-entered Earth's atmosphere. A collective, woe swept through the classroom. This material, he continued, can withstand temperatures over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. When astronauts return to Earth, they're basically riding a fireball through the sky at 17,500 miles per hour. Without heat shields like this, they wouldn't make it home. He walked around the room, letting the students take a closer look. Mia, sitting in the front row, hesitantly reached out and touched it. It feels... rough almost like burn. The classroom, which had been full of teasing just a day ago, was now alive with excitement. Hands shot up as students fired off question after question. Have you ever met a real astronaut in person? What's the coolest thing NASA is working on right now? Are aliens real? Dr. Carter chuckled at that last one. Well, if they are, they haven't sent me an email yet. The class laughed but now it was a genuine, engaged kind of laughter, not the mocking kind Jake had faced before. Jake sat up a little straighter in his chair, his heart swelling with pride. He snuck a glance at Ethan, who was still holding the space ice cream. The same kid who had laughed the loudest yesterday now looked impressed, maybe even a little embarrassed. After answering a few more questions, Dr. Carter checked his watch. All right, I think I should let you all get back to your lesson. A wave of groans swept through the room. No, stay longer. Tell us more about the moon missions. Can you come back next week? Dr. Carter grinned. I'll see what I can do. He turned to Jake and ruffled his hair. You ready to walk me out, kiddo? Jake nodded eagerly as they headed. For the door, Ms. Carter spoke up. Dr. Carter, thank you so much for taking the time to visit. This was incredible. My pleasure, he said. NASA always needs bright young minds. Maybe one of these kids will be designing rockets someday, he gave a 